Hey, welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to take a model from a website such as TurboSquid, 3D Warehouse, CG Trader, those type of things, and we're going to put it into Unreal Engine. Um, we're going to go through the process of what it takes. Not every single one is going to be exactly the same, but uh, this one uh, hopefully will cover a lot of the different issues that you might see. Now, if this is the first time that you've joined me, you can get caught up on the tutorials. Um, here at putting on the Fritz 3D visualization and see what else we've done for this landscape. Uh, you can also check out some of my other tutorials in making video games uh, using Unreal Engine or um, 3D modeling using Maya. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into this one. So right here I have a generator shed that I downloaded off of TurboSquid. Um, there's a few things we had to do to get it into this into the into Unreal Engine and then um, get all kind of prepped up. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at TurboSquid. So this is TurboSquid.com. This is where I found that particular um, model. When you are looking for models on TurboSquid or some of the other sites, usually what I use are FBX or OBJ models, but um, you can go into the documentation and find out that there are other model types that will work in Unreal Engine. And you can also get a little bit more information about how to work with some of those assets that you find. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and jump back over to TurboSquid. What I did basically is I just typed in old building. I've looked for um, a bunch of different old buildings that uh, were available. Okay and it goes into something like this and then across the top you can change and i picked free okay and then um i'm going to pop some up here for you basically there'll be like three columns of free ones and then they intermix some of their advertised other buildings that are in here as well okay you will have to create an account in order to be able to use turbo squid and download things off of turbo squid all right, so a lot of interesting stuff in here. Um, not all these buildings have interiors. Some of them, uh, most of them, are just exterior buildings that you can uh, kind of run around in, put into your game. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at um, this generator shed. Here it is right here on TurboSquid. Okay, and then when you get it, there's a bunch of different um, pictures that show you what it looks like, give you some more detail. It shows that there's an interior in this one, okay? And then you can just click on the download and it'll go to your downloads. Now, since I've already downloaded this one and I have it in my, um, in my uh, Unreal Engine game, what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna find a different building. This brick storage building right here is one that I had downloaded. It's got some windows on it, uh, has a door, some other assets around it. This one actually does have an interior as well. Now the door is closed, so we'll deal with that um, in a minute as well. All right, so um, this is kind of what you're looking at. You'll click the download button and then it will go into your, let me go back. It'll actually go into your downloads here. And I have quite a few that I've picked out over the uh, years and uses demonstrations or in some of my um, games and things like that that I put together landscapes. All right, so one of the things when we take a look at them is you look at what is actually available for you to download and for you to use, okay? Now, if we take a look at the brick storage shed, there's fbx.rar. RAR is a type of zipped file. You'll need something like 7-zip to be able to get that uh, to download. So 7-zip.org, and uh, you can download that. It only takes a second to install. It's uh, free. So FBX, there's also a Blender version, and then the show all, okay? So when we're looking at it, we also see that there's DAE, there's a OBJ, and then there's this one called Textures. Okay, you're gonna need that one as well. We're gonna need Textures in order to be able to make it look the way it does, otherwise it's just gonna be a um, blank model, really. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click on the FBX and download it, and also on the Textures and download it. Now, I've already downloaded these to save a little bit of time, okay? So here they are. This is what it downloaded right here. And it's a zip file. And then what I did was I unzipped it and put it into my 3D asset folders here. So here they are right here. 
So if you don't know how to unzip it, um, usually you right click and you'll find um, 7-zip to uh, unzip it. Now mine's a little bit different because of the way I have everything set up. So I'm just going to click on the console. If you do end up using the console like this, you can select it and you can just extract it right there. Okay. But I've already done that. So now let's go ahead and jump over to Unreal Engine real quick. All right. So I'm going to go find a spot to put this in my world. We're going to go ahead and put it back over here between the sh behind the sheriff's building. All right. So somewhere in this space right here. So it's pretty simple to do. Basically, I'm going to bring up my content folder. So I'm going to go to my content. I created a folder already called models. We've talked about this a few times and I've put a few other things in here. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this storage. If I spell things right, it'd be dangerous. Storage shed. Okay, there we go. Storage shed. <clears throat> Double click. All right, so now I'm going to go into my FBX folder and I'm going to click and drag and drop this into here. Okay. And I'm going to say import all. Okay, we're going to get this uh, little error pops up usually with these models that we download off the internet usually there's no smoothing smoothing group with them okay um, not every model needs it anyway but uh, this one is a caution these are cautions not actual errors and then there's some issues with some tangent bases binormals um, which can create some issues but nothing that's really significantly uh, worrisome so I'm not going to worry about any of that and I have put this model in here before uh, to try, try it out so I know that it works. All right, so what it did, it popped up into a new content browser for me. And we take a look to see what's here. We see that there's all these pieces are all separate. And then we have these three materials, okay? Right now, all the pieces are highlighted in blue. So that means they're all selected. We're gonna click, drag all those pieces that are selected and we're gonna drop it into the scene. And we can see that it's pretty large and also um, it's all blank right now it's just white because none of these actually have any of their textures on them okay so let's go ahead and take a look back here in our folder and if I look at the textures okay there's a materials folder which none of this stuff will actually import with this and then there's these three textures right here now if I were to try to click and drag and drop these three textures into this only the window one would actually go because these are named main text and also props. We already have two objects in here with those names on them. Fortunately, they named the material so we know where these particular textures go. Sometimes you'll get a model that does not happen, okay? So you will have to kind of play guess. So what I'm gonna do inside of here, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna call this textures. I could have drug in the other uh, textures folder but because it has those other objects in there that won't uh, import, it may cause some problems. Typically, they just won't import them, but uh, that's okay. So now here's my textures folder, and I want to bring up my textures that I want to import. I'm going to select them, click and drag and drop. Okay, so there they are. They're all, they are all imported. Now, one thing that we can do to get these onto our object here is we could click and drag and drop these onto the different surfaces and hope to get lucky that we get them in the right spot. Um, and it will actually create an additional material for that particular, um, for that particular object. Okay. So for example, if I did that here and I clicked and dragged and dropped this into the windows, hopefully I hit the window says I did, but I didn't actually get the material to work the way I want it to. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete that material and I'm going to manually make it. Now it's going to want me to force delete it. So I'm going to force delete it right now. It went back to having nothing on that surface area. All right. So I'm going to go back to my content drawer down here and I'm going to actually shrink this down a little bit so I have more room to work. All I need is those three textures visible. 
I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to double click on my Windows one. That this will pop up. Here is the Windows material. This is the default parameter that it put on it because it didn't know what texture went with it. It just throws a parameter on there. So I'm going to select my window texture. I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to select that parameter. I'm going to delete that. This is just going to be a real simple uh, creation here. So I'm just going to uh, put that on there like that. I'm going to save it. Okay. And it doesn't look like it actually did anything to my um, model for some reason. And I'll have to figure out what's going on with the windows there. But we'll figure that out in a little bit. We still have two more materials to do. So now I'm going to go ahead and select my main texture. Same thing. I'm going to drag this main texture down here. I'm going to delete the parameter. And I'm just going to select this up in here. Okay. I'm going to hit save. And now you can see that most of my um, building now has its texture on it. Now, there are no normal maps. These are just three pretty simple textures. Our material can handle a lot more detail. If you get um, a higher resolution model, one that has normals and things like that, metallics, uh, specular maps attached to it, you hook them up the same way. You just drag them all in here, all of the maps that you have, and you would connect them all up. This one doesn't happen to have any of that high resolution stuff. So um, we're just going to go with what we've got. We're just going to go with our base color map and that's it. Okay. And then I'm going to drag in the props, connect this in and save it. All right. So move these out of the way. This is what we got. Now, without the normal maps, we don't have that good 3D look to it. Um, but this, is a, this is one approach to doing it. And if we take a look... All right, so um, for the windows, let's see if we can fix this to look a little bit better, okay? Um, for the window, because we know this is a window, what we're going to do is, um, not that, come on, there we go. Expand this up a little bit and expand this over a little bit here too. I'm going to select the material name right here, Windows, okay? I'm going to slow, scroll down and right here where it says opaque, I'm going to change that to um, translucent, all right? And we're going to get an opacity with this. And I'm going to connect this opacity onto here, see what this does for us. All right. And we should get some... You know, I think that's what was happening before. I bet you before it automatically worked for us, but uh, because you can't see through it, um, let's go inside and see if we can see back out. Oddly enough, we cannot. Okay, let me save this. Whoops. Let me save it. I forgot to save it. Let's save it. See if that makes any difference. All right, let's get a little bit of light in here and see what we're doing. Now we should be able to see through this. The material looks like it wants to be invisible, but let's, instead of using the RGBA, let's try this to A. All right, that's a little bit better. Let's try that. Hmm. Okay, it should be see-through right now, and it's not. not. Sure, what's happening here? Okay, so um, came back and uh, really do not know what is happening with this particular um, <laughs> this particular piece. It should have been really a quick, easy tutorial, but this caught me by a little bit of surprise. 
there's something going on with this static mesh. I really don't know what it is. Um, but uh, I think what I need to do, I'm probably just going to delete it. And um, I'll do the same thing for all three windows. There's three windows in this, but for this demonstration, I'm just going to do the one. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go into place actors. I'm going to go to my shapes. I'm going to bring a cube in. And I'm just going to go ahead and shape it to fit into this spot. Something like that. Okay. All right, and then squish it down. Get lined up. And now that I got that all set up, I'm just going to go ahead and grab that. Um, window texture that we made, windows material, and throw that on there. And there we have it, okay? So, um, not sure what was going on with that static mesh. Too much work to try to figure out how to fix it um, here inside of Unreal Engine. And it wasn't worth taking the time to export it as an FBX into Maya to try to figure it out. So, there we have it, we've got that, and I think I want that to be a little bit darker. So we have this two-sided option. Let's click two-sided and see what that does for our material. I'm trying to make this look a little bit, you know, dirtier. And if we don't end up liking the way that looks, and we want it to be a little less visible or see-through, um, we're using the alpha off of this to try to drive the transparency. We could also hold one down on our keyboard, left mouse click. We can get a constant and we could plug that into the opacity instead and then um, change it, play around with the values. Anywhere, anything between zero and one, so like 0.5, right, um, would make it less transparent. So if I save that, it was kind of midway. Okay, and I kind of get this dirty window look a little bit better. We can also even drive this up a little bit higher. Don't forget, you got to save it. Okay. But the next thing I want to talk about is with these models, a lot of times when you bring them in, it will set to zero for everything in the world here in the center of the model, okay? So everything that is part of this model in the world is now centered here in the center of the model. So what we wanna do is we wanna to try to fix that so we can get things like the door to work when we wanna get it set up to be able to be interactive with the player. So what I'm gonna do is right up here, I'm gonna right click in the location, I'm gonna copy that, I'm gonna pull this out a little bit, I'm gonna Go down so I can see the edge of the door here. I'm going to hold the Alt button and middle mouse button click. So middle mouse button and the Alt button on your keyboard. I'm going to snap the widget to the edge of the door. Okay. Once I have it there, I'm going to right click and I lost it. So let's try that again. And sometimes that happens. So I'm going to click the door again. I'm going to hold Alt, click there, right click. There we go. It stayed that time. I'm going to go to pivot. And we're going to set as pivot offset right there. Okay. And now if I click off of anywhere else and go back to it, it'll be right there. I'm going to go back up here, right click. I'm going to paste it back so that it goes where it's supposed to. And if I hit E, I can open the door up, rotate the door where it's supposed to rotate. Okay. Okay. So now the uh, building is in our world and... Looks like the glass has decided to, there we go, 
put it back where it was. I rescaled this. So if you take a look, I rescaled the entire building down to 0.55 of its original size. So that would be a little bit closer to the scale that it needs to be in our game. So if I hit play, if I run up to it, you'll notice I can't go in it, all right? And that's one more thing that we gotta take care of here real quick. So let's go ahead and uh, do that real quick. These errors are from something else in the game. We'll not worry about that. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we need to do to fix the collider. So with the building selected, so I'm gonna select the outer part of the building. Right here in the static mesh section of the details is the building outline. If I double click on it, we can take a look and we see that the cement shack has this green box all around it. If it does not, go here and show your simple collisions right here. Check that box on, okay? With that checked on, you can see that we have a collider. Go up to collision and remove the collision. And then over here, scroll down in your details section until you get to collision. And what we want to do is we want to change it, the complexity from project default to use complex collision as simple. And now you can see that we have this other collider that pops up in here. And we're going to go ahead and save that. Now we need to do the same thing for the door part, the door frame as well. Because if we click on that and I select the door frame, double click on it, you'll see that it also has a, if you go to show, simple collision, it has a box collider around it. We're going to remove that also. And then we're going to go to collision, go to the collision section. Right here where it says project default, change that to complex as collision. We're going to go ahead and save that. Okay. And now if I go back to my project and hit play, I should be able to run inside, run around inside the building. There we go. All right. So... I talked about other models as well. Okay, so this is um, a different model. Okay, and the, I also got this off of Turbo Squid. And if we take a look at that real quick, okay, that's this building right here, this old building. I downloaded the FBX zip. Okay, and if you notice, there are no textures with this one. So when you download this one, what you're going to get. is a zip file and then when you unzip it you're going to have the building and you're also going to have three texture maps you have a diffuse you're going to have the normal and you're going to have the roughness okay so when i imported that directly into unreal engine it already put most of these into the um into the scene for me okay now there's this uh, garbage pile here that I didn't drag in. But if I drag that in, you can see that it already has it on there. Now, when I say most of it, for some reason on this particular model, and it doesn't happen on every one of them, but when it created the material, it did not recognize the normal map. So here, this is what the material looked like. It automatically created this, okay? And it automatically populated it onto the building for me. This was missing the normal map. All you had to do was just apply the normal map. It said error down here at the bottom, okay? So if I were to take that out of there, it looked like this when I put it in here, okay? And if I were to save it, okay? That's basically what everything looked like. When I first imported it in, opened the material up, this is what I had. All I had to do was go in, find the normal map, apply it into here, save it. And the building came out like this. Okay. It also needed the uh, colliders fixed, just like we did with this other one. It was a lot simpler. There's just the one building, double click on it. And you'll fix the colliders just the same way. And you also had to scale it. This one was actually smaller. Just kind of depends on what you've got when you first open them up. Okay. So, all right. So that's it for uh, this tutorial. Um, like I said, basically, Turbo Squid, 
uh, 3D Warehouse. Um, there's also uh, CG Trader, a few other uh, websites that you can use out there. Um, and all of them are going to have different types of models with different skill levels that have been done to them, uh, or different skill levels that have built them. And uh, you're going to have some that come in like this particular shack right here that uh, was pretty much all you had to do was add one texture to fix it a little bit and then scale it and fix the colliders. The other one, uh, you had to recreate the materials and it wasn't quite as highly detailed as this one was. So you're going to run into a bunch of different things. You're going to have all kinds of uh, issues. Um, sometimes they come in smoothly. Sometimes you're going to have to do some fixing. Uh, also, one of the other things you can do with these models is because... They are uh, FBX, OBJ type models. You can import them into Blender or into Maya and modify them if you need to, fix them. Uh, one of the things I did do for that fence that I have all the way out there, which I'm not going to run out to show you, but that fence, I had to modify that so that it would work with my um, splines so that when I did the spline system, it actually had one post instead of two posts right next to each other because it was a model that had two fence posts in it. So you had to take one out so that it would modify correctly and then you have to do a few other things but um for the most part that is it so if you have any questions again put them down here in the comment section and if you uh get a chance uh, check out some of my other tutorials here i'm putting on the fritz 3d visualization uh, if you like this video please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel i will see you in the next tutorial